If there was one really simple thing you could do to make sure that your potted fruit trees lived longer, grew healthier, and also gave you bigger and better fruit, wouldn't you do it? Well, today I'm gonna to be doing that simple thing, and it's repotting my fruit trees with fresh potting mix. So I'll be potting up these three citrus trees right behind me, and I'll not only show you how to do it, but also how I knew it was time to repot my fruit trees. I know I am so guilty of leaving my indoor plants in their same pots for year after year, even though I can tell they've outgrown their pot or that the soil is really compacted and dry and just kind of dead looking. But then every time I do repot, I'm always amazed at how quickly the plant turns around, how much more vigorously it grows, and how much more important is that than for potted fruit trees, right? I expect it to not only grow, but also give me delicious fruit year after year and how can it do that if its root ball is too big for the pod or if it's left in this small amount of very depleted compacted soil. So I'm really excited to pot up these fruit trees not only to get them in bigger pots as they grow but also to refresh the soil and to take a look at the health of the roots give them a trim if they need to but hopefully everything is healthy but I just I have a feeling I'm going to see a really big difference in how they grow in fruit this season. First of all, how do you know you need to go to a bigger pot? Well, there are a couple things that you can look for. First of all, you can actually see by looking at the tree, especially before I pruned it, I did trim this a little bit, it just sort of looks top heavy. There's more green leafy growth than looks like it's in balance with the size of the pot. But on top of that, this whole last season, I noticed it grew really beautifully and vigorously, but especially toward the end of the season, as I would water it, I noticed the water would just sit on the top of the pot before, for a while before it drained, as if the soil was compacted. And then when it drained, it would drain out really, really quickly. And so that tells me that the water isn't actually draining through the soil, but more likely down the sides of the pot, which means the roots aren't getting what they need. To top it off, you can actually see the roots at the top of this pot and if I try to stick my finger in the soil which is one of the ways I would typically check for soil moisture I can't it's like the roots are too densely matted in there so again I know this guy desperately needs more space and more soil to get what it needs and to top it all off this one and especially the a key lime tree over there, these two would topple over in a breeze, which again tells me that they are top heavy. So a bigger pot should help solve all of these problems. So let's talk about the pot for a minute. So when you size up to a new pot, you don't want to go too big too fast. It can actually kind of shock the tree if all of a sudden it's swimming in ex excessive soil. So these pots that I have them in right now are 16 inch pots. Pots are typically measured the diameter across the top. So you want to go up about two to four inches total in diameter. So in other words, an inch or two of clearance around the circumference of the whole pot. So this is a 16 inch pot and the new pots that I bought are in between 18 and 20 inches, kind of depending on the pot. So you can just see the volume has gone up, but not too much. The other thing to pay attention to is that I have some really nice big drainage holes. I hope you can see there were a couple already in the pot and I added a couple more just by drilling through so that it can drain really, really well. And the other thing is, as you can see, it's lightweight. I like my pots to be on the lighter side because I need to be able to move them and protect them over the winter. Um, and so I try to avoid a big heavy pot, although I love the look of cement or terracotta, but they can get really, really heavy. So I'm sticking with plastic and this will last me a really long time. When your tree is young and still growing, you wanna repot the tree every two to three years so that you can size up. Now, eventually your tree is going to get to its full mature size and you won't need a bigger pot anymore. But even in that case, maybe about every three to five years, I would carefully take the tree out and give it some fresh potting mix to reinvigorate the tree. So while the tree is young, about every two to three years, and then when it's older, about five years. 
As far as time of year goes, it's best to wait until the tree is dormant or whatever is the slow growing season. These citrus trees tend to grow year round in my climate, but um, this time of year, right after I've harvested the fruit, they do seem to take a little bit of a break, although I already see some blossoms forming. I've also just pruned these trees lightly just to thin out the growth. Last year I gave them a big chop when they were a little bit younger and if you're interested in learning more about how to prune potted citrus trees I will link to that video below. But I did lighten up the growth a little bit because the idea is to lessen the potential stress. So we're waiting until they're dormant or at least growing slowly and I've lightened up the load of the green leafy growth so that hopefully the transition to the new pot will be easy and smooth on the tree. All right, now let's actually get to the repotting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is carefully holding the base of the trunk, I'm just gonna ease the tree out of the pot and put it on my, I have a canvas drop cloth here, but it can be a tarp or whatever. <laughs> Look at those roots. Oh my gosh, this tree is gonna be so much happier in his new pot. All right, now I'm gonna very gently just remove the loose soil. There's not a lot in this one. I don't wanna disturb the roots too much. It's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite call it root bound, but it is approaching it. So I am gonna loosen a few very carefully on the bottom. Okay, so now I'm just gonna check the depth of the soil that I need to place in the bottom of the pot. So you want the top of the root ball to basically be a couple of inches below the top of the pot. You want to leave some room for to be able to water it. So I want to make sure it's set not too deep. That can be a big problem if it's set too deep. So this is about the height. So I actually need several inches of soil at the base. Okay, let's try that. Perfect, that looks great. So now it's just a matter of filling in the edges with the rest of my potting mix. All right, so that's it. One down, two to go. Well, that's how these things go. I potted up two of the trees. You can see them right there in their new pots, looking good, except I ran out of potting mix. I thought I had more than enough and I did not. So learn from my mistake. I'm gonna head back to the store, get another bag, mix it with my pine bark and pot up this last tree. So a quick note about the potting mix that I used. I often make my own potting mix. Um, and if you're interested to see how I do that, I have another video on that that I'll link to in the description. But this time I decided to go with store-bought potting mix that I amended just a little bit because most store-bought mixes are um, made for smaller pots and so they tend to have finer particles which is gonna get compacted over time and isn't gonna drain well enough for my big fruit trees. So I add about 25% pine bark to a really good quality store-bought potting mix. This time I'm using the Fox Farm Ocean Forest Potting Mix, which is really amazing, but a little on the pricey side. So I also used something I haven't tried before, which is this miracle Grow organic raised bed mix. It, I really like the look of the ingredients. It doesn't have any synthetic fertilizers in it. All of the fertilizers are natural products like um, bone meal and bat guano. They've got worm castings and a bunch of other good stuff. And it, even more importantly for me, it doesn't have any wetting agents in it. That's one of the things that you find a lot in commercial potting mixes that you want to watch for. Because I've got, you know, other things in these mixes that are going to retain water for me. But I'm a little more concerned about drainage. Especially because when I unpotted, if that's even a word, uh, these trees, two of them were not rotted, but holding on to more moisture than I realized. So that makes me think that drainage is gonna be really key for these. So that's what I used for my potting mixes. Now my trees are done. They're in their new pots. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain to get them back to where they need to be because now they're heavier, but I will suffer and do it because I'm really happy with how it turned out.
finally, the last step is to just give each tree a really good drink. And if you like, you can top off with a layer of mulch. I'm just gonna use my same pine bark just to insulate and keep the moisture in. But that's it. Let me know in the comments if you've done this. When was the last time that you repotted your fruit trees, if ever? No shame, it took me a long time. But um, let me know if you've done it and how it went. And um, I hope that this inspires you to go ahead and repot your fruit trees, give them a refresh, or maybe to grow a fruit tree in a pot if you never have. But thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.